All right, so here's how landed costs work in a nutshell. First, you need to go to settings. And once in settings, search for landed costs, make sure it's turned on. And also, if you want, you can make sure you turn margins on as well. Once those are set, then you're gonna go to the actual product category. And I'm gonna go here. I select all for demo purposes and I make sure the costing method is assigned to either FIFO or average. I'll do FIFO because in most cases when you're doing landed costs, you're doing FIFO. And then for inventory valuation, also choose automated and everything else will pre-populate here. Now, once that's done, you're ready to begin. Let's start from scratch. Let's actually create a product. We'll call this product A. I'm gonna mark it as a storable product and I'll leave everything else blank for now or I just won't fill it in. And obviously the category is uh, all and all, as we know, is a FIFO and automated uh, costing method and in inventory valuation. So now that we have product A, let's purchase it. We go to select our vendor, we select product A, we select the quantity we wanna buy and the price we pay. We'll pay $100. And now I confirm the order. Now, when I receive the stock, the valuation will reflect what we paid for it or what is listed here. And you'll see that when I go into inventory reporting, you'll see product A is now valued one unit at $100. Now let's say product A is a, a heavy piece of machinery, right? And it, it came from China and it has a, a markup, uh, right? It has a um, essentially a landed cost of, of $30. So we need to increase the valuation of this product by $30 to account for the true pr price that we paid to acquire this good. So if I go to my landed cost here, I create a landed cost. I can specify the date. I specify the inventory transfer that the landed cost is related to. And in this case, I can see all my transfers here and I'll select number seven warehouse in and down here, I could also specify a vendor bill if I want to, but here I'll add the landed cost product. We could have freight, we could have tariffs, we could have refrigeration expenses. If it's a perishable good, you can have all sorts of different types of costs that you want to attribute to the underlying cost of the product itself. Here is freight. Description, we leave it as is. The actual uh, account that we want to uh, hit when we when we post this the split method here is how do we want to distribute this freight expense now because we only received one unit it doesn't really matter for us but in the event that you received for example a thousand different products uh and you wanted to distribute these this freight expense across those you could right distribute by quantity by current cost by weight or by volume so if I receive 10 liters of beer, I could distribute, you know, a $2 refrigeration expense across, uh, you know, all of that beer by volume. So for every uh, liter of beer that I sell, it would have a corresponding uh, landed cost associated to it. Um, that way I know the true price that I paid for the beer. And it's important to know the true price because only when you know what you actually paid, do you know what your actual margin is. And as a business, it's very important to know what the actual margin is because that's your profit. And you don't wanna think you earned X when in fact you earned Y. So let's continue with our example. We have an equal split and we'll say $30. And, oops, don't mean to click that. So now that our 30 is set, we can click compute and it adjusts the valuation here. So the original value was 100 for product A and the new value will be, one, will be 130. And when I'm ready to confirm this, I click validate and it's done. And now when I go to inventory report, you'll see the valuation of product A is $130. So now let's turn around and sell this. When I go and sell this, I create my quote here for John Doe, product A, you will see my margin right now is at negative 99. The cost price as well is specified as 100. Now, this is a provisional margin. This is the price that you last paid for the product. And it's not yet set in stone. It's just telling you that this is what the expected margin is based on the last price 
or the expect this is the this is the historical cost price. You'll see that this will update when I go and proceed with the order. So as I confirm this, and as I go deliver, right, I actually pick the specific product off the shelf that I want to use. And right, I could have ten units of product A that came in over the course of a year with di at different purchase prices and which inherited different landed costs as well. So their their valuation could fluctuate. And depending on which specific unit I pick off the shelf, you will see it will in, it could impact the cost. And once I apply that, I picked the one unit that we had in our stock, which we know was valued at 130. And once I've defined that that is in fact the unit that I have selected to fulfill this order, it then is captured on the sale order and it is listed as $130 cost price. And now my margin is of course, right, is reflected um, accordingly. In this case, you'll see your margin down here. So it's also important to know that from an accounting standpoint, the journal entries, I can see everything here. Warehouse in for product A, right? We posted our stock uh, valuation was debited $100. Then we posted a landed cost for $30, which of course, um, debited stock valuation another 30. That means our stock valuation was up to 130. And then we can see here, we credited our stock valuation 130 and debited the uh, delivered stock and term delivered account 130 here to reduce from our right from our stock the $130 uh, value, which was the product A. So you can see that the landed costs carry all the way through to the actual accounting and the inventory valuation and that everything is captured uh, along the way to know what you truly paid for the specific product that you shipped on that sale order. And your margin will be actual in terms of its calculation because it's going to look at what you actually paid for the specific product you shipped and what you actually ended up selling that product for in order to capture the true profit uh, or that or that actual margin that I just spoke of. So it's important to uh, know how this works. If you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out and let me know. Thanks.